What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today, the plan is to put together a sleeper build. What we are going to do is take all of the old crap out of the uh, computer that I've been messing with the last couple days and install some modern hardware in it. Pretty much what I had to do basically was pull all of the old hardware out of this uh, system. If you guys watched my last videos, you know it was like a Pentium 4, 6600 GT, like 160 gigabyte hard drive, and just all this super old ancient stuff. So we went ahead and tossed that stuff out, made a little pile of dust everywhere, and uh, I went ahead and cleaned up the case really well. Uh, I went ahead and wiped it down, made sure all the dust was out. A little, a little bit of vacuuming just to uh know clean it up a little bit I didn't want to go super crazy but I don't want to be covered in dust by the time this uh, PC build was over with but once I got the case prepped and ready to build in it was time to go ahead and throw a uh, some PC parts in here and I decided to go with a Ryzen build we're gonna be throwing a Ryzen 5 1600 in here along with an RX 580 so the first thing to do was to go ahead and install the uh, motherboard in this case the uh, MSI B350 PC Mate. And that went in without any problems, although I did forget one of the standoff screws, but I'm not going back in and fixing that. We also went ahead and uh, went with the Arctic Freezer 33 Esports Edition CPU cooler. It's this big red thing with uh, push-pull fans on it. Happy to report that actually fit into the case with no problems. I was kind of worried that maybe there might not be enough uh, width or height, however you want to think of it to uh, fit the CPU cooler, but it actually fit with no issues at all. As for the power supply, I decided to go with this uh, FSP Hydro G uh, 650 watt power supply because it's fully modular. Um, since this case doesn't really have cutouts for routing cables through, and uh, there's not a lot of room behind the motherboard tray, so you can't really route cables back there, I decided a modular power supply would be my best uh, chance at actually getting everything to look somewhat presentable in the case. Now as for cooling, I decided to run just a single 140 millimeter fan up front. Uh, this case is super old school as far as cooling goes. I think it only fits like 80 millimeter fans or something crazy like that. I keep wanting to say like 60 millimeters, but that may be too small. But uh, yeah, it pretty much fits fans smaller than what we use today. So I decided to kind of like just throw this fan in here up front, 140 millimeters. It's not, it's not perfect, but I got it to work. Unfortunately, we won't be running any rear exhaust fans here. As I mentioned, the case only supports like super small fans. I really couldn't think of an easy way to mod it so that I could fit like a 120 or something back there. So I decided to just not run any at all. And hopefully the fact that we're running a push-pull configuration on the CPU cooler will uh, be good enough as far as exhausting heat out the back. Uh, I know it's attached to the uh, CPU heat sink instead of just kind of back there freely, but I think it'll be good enough. So I started to route the uh, cables here throughout the case. Um, the thing I like about this power supply is it's got these flat black cables, so that should make the uh, cable routing a little bit easier. Kind of the plan here is to uh, fit it behind the uh, CD-ROM drive, which I forgot to mention that I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave that in, as well as the floppy disk drive. I don't know where the covers are for those two slots anyways, and plus I think this will help kind of uh, you know, set the tone as far as a sleeper build. So we've got these in here. They're not gonna be hooked up to anything, obviously, because this uh, motherboard doesn't support IDE drives, but it'll kind of give us the uh, look that we're going for once all of the side panels are on. So I kind of decided to uh, just tuck the cables behind that, uh, as well as the uh, hard drive cage so that they're kind of out of the way. Now, when you look from the back, you can obviously see them tucked away, but from the left side panel, you actually can't see them, and that's really what matters. So anyways, everything was going by without a hitch, uh, no problems at all, but of course there's gotta be some type of drama or some type of factor that makes this build more difficult than it is. And that happened when I went to install the RX 580. I quickly realized it's too big for this case. And I was so disappointed because I went through all of this work and I was like, making the case nice, routing the cables and everything. And I go to do like one of the last steps and I'm like, oh damn, this doesn't fit. So I had to improvise a little bit. I went ahead and uh, found a hammer and we basically beat the hell out of the case until the uh, graphics card was able to fit. You know, you gotta tenderize the meat a little bit. So we just bing, 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 
and uh, did that until basically the graphics card was able to fit in the case. And as you guys can see, it is a very tight fit, but it works, so whatever. So everything's coming along nicely. I even got the uh, front panel connectors to uh, look pretty decent down there at the bottom of the case without any cutouts. Uh, as I mentioned before, basically all of the cables are hiding behind the uh, hard drive cage and the uh, CD-ROM drive because it kind of, you know, it sticks out and then you just kind of tuck the cables in uh, in this area here and it just kind of, I don't know, it makes them look nice. Oh, and I almost forgot right above where I was uh, beating the hell out of the case. Yeah, I got a 480 gigabyte SSD installed there from uh, OCZ. So, uh, that's how I handled the uh, storage thing. There wasn't really a lot of options. I thought about like, I don't know, maybe Velcro on the drive somewhere or something like that, but then cable routing was an issue. So I decided this was the best place for it. I just kind of flipped it backwards so that the cables exit towards the uh, front of the case rather than in the uh, main compartment. And that helps hide some of the uh, wires a little bit. But as you guys can see here, it's done. So we got the Ryzen 5 1600 in there. We got the Arca Freezer 33 Esports Edition CPU cooler. We got 16 gigabytes of RAM. We've got the RX 580. We've got the OCZ uh, 480 gigabyte SSD, the 650 watt power supply. And uh, you know, everything is pretty modern aside from the case, which is perfect for a sleeper build. So on the outside, it looks terrible. It looks like this super old, like early 2000s case. But when you look on the inside, modern day hardware and that's exactly again that's exactly the look that we were going for and i'm actually pretty happy with it i didn't think the cable management would come out this nice looking but i think it's pretty clean all things considered so yeah this was pretty fun to do it was a lot of work a lot of prep work actually just to get the case ready and then i ended up like beating the hell out of it at the end of the day but uh I just like how everything looks man it's like this it's so crappy that could the case is so crappy but everything inside it is nice and clean. Total sleeper, which is definitely my style. I was also surprised at how far cases have come since this thing came out. Like if you compare this to the uh, old Intermax case that I just reviewed, or not the old Intermax case, but the new Intermax case I just reviewed, it's like a night and day difference. They're not even close to the same level. But I'd say this is a W because with the side panel on, you have no idea what's in here. You think it was your grandma's computer, but turns out it's not. It's actually something that's uh, worth a damn. So you guys let me know what you think about this sleeper PC build down in the comments below. Make sure you guys like this video if you like this type of content. I am going to uh, go edit this now. So uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm out of here. See ya!